I will be talking about comparative pie charts in this video and um, there, are, there are several number of points that you need to know. You're not going to use all of them for all the different questions that you're going to do but you do need to know all of them because they, they will help you at least in some way in all the questions that you will face. Okay? Now, what I have here is two circles representing two pie charts. Now, previously, um, a pie chart, you would know uh, the angles that we have around here would represent the different proportions of different things that you're looking at, okay? So within this pie chart. And it will be the same for this one, okay? Now, if the angles were the same here and here, then that would mean that the same proportions of those different things, you know, are in place. Now, what the comparative pie chart does is it also gives you a representation of the frequency, the total frequency. So because this is a larger pie chart, this represents a larger frequency. Okay, and this one here is a smaller pie chart, pie chart, and this represents a smaller frequency. But these are also in proportion, okay? And they are proportional to the area. So when we think about the area of this pie chart and the area of this pie chart, that will be proportional to the frequencies, the total frequency here and the total frequency there, okay? Now, there are a number of ways I can show that in, in sort of ratio form or equation form, and I want to show you them, okay? So this is what I'm going to do next. So first thing, I said the areas are proportional. Now, if we say that there's a radius here, okay, and we're going to give it a, a name R1, and there's a radius here as well, and that's going to be R2, okay, just so that we know that these two values are different. And the area of this one will be pi R squared, or pi pi and then r1 squared and the area of the other one would be pi and then r2 squared okay so these will be the respective areas now this ratio this ratio of the areas of the two circles is equal to the let's say this is this has a frequency f1 and this has a frequency f2 so this ratio will be equal to f1 to F2, okay? So this is the first point. The areas of the pie charts are proportional to the frequencies that they represent. Now, other things. Now, this ratio can be simplified, and it is useful to simplify it because really the main thing that we're going to be working with is the radius, okay? And what we can simplify this ratio is by pi, okay? So this ratio is actually equal to R1 squared to R2 squared. So let's write that down. So this is actually R1 squared and R2 squared. And that's also equal to F1 and F2. Okay, so notice all I did was I just simplified this side to get R1 squared and R2 squared by dividing both of them by pi. And it, the, we, remember, we said this ratio is equal to that ratio, so it's still equal to that ratio. So we've got F1 and F2. So now what we're seeing is the square of the radius or the square of the radii are proportional to the frequencies. Okay? Now, when you write these, there's a number of things that you can do. Okay? So there's, there is a number of things that we can do with, with va when we have values here. Okay? So, for example, if we know three of these values, any three, we should be able to find the fourth one. Okay? So there's four values here. That's R1, R2, F1, and F2. If I know three of them, I should be able to find the fourth one. Now, how is that? Well, if this is the case, if, if we've got um, equality of proportions here, we can write some equations, okay? So um, I could have done it with this one, but I'm not going to do it with this one because the pi's will just cancel out and you know we would still get something like this, all right? So the equations will look like this. So I can either say, R1 squared over R2 squared is equal to F1 over F2. Or I can do it the other way around. I can say R2 squared over R1 squared is equal to F2 over F1. So I'm going to write both of them down. So we can say R1 squared over R2 squared. This is going to be equal to F1 and F2. I could also say the other way around. I could say R2 squared over R1 squared is equal to F2 over F1, okay? 
Any of them is fine, okay? Now, if I know three of the values, like I said, I can rearrange and find the fourth one, okay? So let's say, for example, we want to know R1, and we got the, we got the value for R2, F2, and F1. We can just multiply both sides by R2 squared, and then square root, and that will give us R1. So notice that we do need to pay attention to the square here, and we do need to square root at some point, okay? Now, in other places, you might see other formulas. Like, for example, um, this side would have been square rooted and to give R1 over R2, and this side would have been square rooted to give square root of F1 over square root of F2. Now, I don't want to do that. I want to keep it like this, and I, and I want you to use these ones and rearrange these to solve your equations, okay? So you will be given three of these, maybe, and you have to find the fourth one, okay? Let's say, for example, um, F2, you're not given. Now, it's a little bit harder to rearrange this one than it is this one, because F2 is at the top of the fraction here. So you want to find F2, so multiply this side by F1, and you will get your value, okay? Um, let's say, for example, you want to know, um, uh, let's say you want to know R2 here. Now, R2, again, is at the bottom of the fraction, so this one will be better for you. So you can multiply both sides by R1 squared, and then because this would be R2 squared would be equal to that, you're going to have to square root it. So I'm just going to show you how that rearranges. So let's say I want to find R2. This is harder to use than that one, so let's use that one. So I'm going to show you how the rearranging will work. So R2 squared will be equal to F2 over F1 times R1 squared, okay? Now, notice that this is R2 squared, and I want to know what R2 is. So I'm going to have to square root now. So I'm going to have to say R2 is equal to square root of all of that. So F2 over F1 times R1 squared. Okay? So that's how I can find R2. And this is just an example. If that's what I'm looking for, this is what I can do. Okay? Um, if I'm looking for, let's say, R1 square, R1, I would use this one because I just multiply there and then square root. If I'm looking for F1, I just um, square these two, divide them, times it by F2, and I'll get F1. Okay, so let's, let's use this example, and I'm going to try and find F1. So let's rearrange that one. So we would say F1 would be equal to whatever R1 squared over R2 squared times F2 is. Okay? So remember, if I know what radius 1 is and radius 2, I'm going to square them, I'm going to divide them, then I'm going to times by the frequency of this one, and that will give me the frequency of the first one. Okay? Um, I will show you how this works with some examples so that you get an idea, but this is really the main idea, and you need to know this quite well. Okay, so what I've done here is um, I removed the ratios and I've kept the equations that, you know, the ratios lead to. Now, um, I'm going to continue to talk in abstract terms, so I'm not going to give any scenarios. And the main thing that I'm going to show you here is how to find any one of these four variables, okay, when three of the others are known, okay? So I'll show you some examples for the different ones. So let's start with, let's say we want to know F1 when we know R1, R2, and F2. So these are given to you. You need to work out F1. Let's see how that will work. So let me just make some values up for you. So R1, let's say, is 4. R2 is 5. And let's say F2 is uh, 25. Okay? And I need to find F1. Okay, so I need to find the frequency of the first pie chart here. You know, how many people or how, how, many, how many things represented here. So... F1 is what I need to find. F1 is here in this equation, and F1 is here in this equation. Now, this is at the bottom of a fraction. I want to use the one on the top. Okay, so this is probably better to use. So I'm going to substitute into this formula. So I need to R1 squared. So that would be 4 squared. Let's write that down. So we've got 4 squared, and then over R2 squared. That would be 5 squared. And that will be equal to F1 is what I want to find, and F2 is 25. Put the 25 here. Now, I need to rearrange this to find F1. So that's going to be 16 here over 25 times 25 is equal to F1. Okay? And you can see, or you can use a calculator if you like, 
this is going to be 16. Okay, so we've got 16 is equal to F1. So if the pie charts are in these proportions, where R1 is 4 and R2 is 5, and the frequency of this one is 25, then the frequency of this one must be 16. Okay? I'm going to do some more examples so that you can see how to find the R as well. Okay? This time, what I want to do is I want to show you how to find the radius when two frequencies and another radius is given. So this time what we need to do is we need to find um, the second radius, this one here, R2. We are told the frequency of the first one is 288. The frequency of the second one is 450. And um, we need to use also the radius of the first one, which is 12, to find this one. So three of these are given, and I need to find R2. Let's see where R2 is in the formula. So R2 is here at the bottom of a fraction, and R2 here is at, at the top of the fraction. So this is probably better to use. Okay? So we're going to use this, and we're going to substitute the values. So we're going to have um, R2 squared, so R2 squared over 12 squared is equal to, uh, we're going to have F2, which is 450, so 450 over 288, okay? Now, if I want to rearrange this, I would multiply both sides by 12 squared, so let's do that. So R2 squared is equal to, 450 over 288 times by 12 squared. Okay? And I don't want R2 squared. What I want to know is R2. So that's going to be R2 is going to be all of that but square rooted. So 450 over 288 times 12 squared and then square root of all of that. Okay? And what you will find is if you put that in your calculator, you will get 15. Okay, so the radius of this second one is 15. Now, what you're going to be asked to do, or what you might need to do, is you need to be able to draw some pie charts. So maybe one of them is going to be drawn for you, and you had to draw the second one. And this information would have been given to you. So this is how you would have found the radius, and then you would have used this radius with, with a set of compasses, and you're going to draw a pie chart like that. Okay, so that's something that you might be asked to do. Now, I do also know that some of you think about proportion in a different way. So I'm going to just show you um, one other way that, you know, you might want to think about it. Okay? Now, you can ignore the rest of the video um, up to the questions at the end. Okay? So you can ignore it up to the questions at the end. But, you know, the next example that I show you, you know, you don't really need to know. Okay? So I'm, I'm going to do some more examples just to show you... Um, another way of thinking about proportions, okay? So remember the main idea that we said was that the areas are proportional to the, to the frequencies that these pi charts will represent. So pi r squared for the first one uh, to pi r squared for the second one would be the same as frequency of the first one to frequency of the second one. Now remember also that this ratio can be simplified to make um, just r1 squared to r2 squared by dividing by pi. And again, this would be the same as that. Now... In the first example um, that I showed you, I think I used R1 is 4, R2 was 5, and I gave F2, which was 25. And you had to find F1. So I'm going to show you a different way to do it, straight from these ratios. So if I substitute first, so 4 here, 5 into here, and 25 into here. So let's do that. So we've got R1 is 4, so 4 squared to 5 squared is going to be equal to, we need to find F1, so F1 to 25. Now, when ratios are equal, what you can do is you can find what the multiplication is to get from this part of the ratio to that part, so this term to this term. And to get back, you can just divide by that same number. And if the ratios are equal, then that multiplication going forwards and that division going backwards would be the same. Okay, so what we can say is, um, let's say 16, so 16 to 25 is equal to F1 to 25. Now, I use these um, quite straightforward numbers, okay, but um, had it not been these, okay, obviously it would have been a bit different, okay, so 
Um, what multiplication takes you from 16 to 25? That would be 25 divided by 16. Okay, so that's 1.5625. Okay, so let's write that down. So this multiplication here is multiplied by 1.5625. Okay, so to go back, it would be divide by that. Now, the, the issue with doing this is notice that we've worked out the squares. Okay, so that's really important. Because when we're trying to find these, you're going to have to make an equation because this multiplication on this division is for um, the squares worked out. Okay, so you have to be really careful about that. So here, if I want to find what F1 is, all I do is 25 divided by 1.5625. Okay, so if I did that, 25 divided by 1.5625, you will find that it gives you 16. Okay, so I can say F1 is going to be equal to 25 divided by 1.5625, and that gives us 16. Now, notice again, I'm saying this. If it had been that we needed to find a radius, this would have been a little bit harder. So I'm going to show you an example like that. Okay, so this is the last example. So I'm going to use the ratios um, to find R2. Okay, so again, it's the same numbers here. So let's just substitute them here. So R1 is 12, so I need to say 12 squared. So 12 squared, and that is R2 squared. F1 is 288, and F2 is 450, okay? So I want to know what the multiplication is going from this to this, okay? Now, I can find that here because these two values are given. So uh, let's draw that arrow. And that will be multiplied by, let's see, so 450 divided by 288. 450 divided by 288, that gives you 1.5625, okay? Now, that multiplication will be the same here, so let's draw that in. So, if I times this by 1.5625, I should get R2 squared, okay? So, the equation that I'm going to make here is going to be that R2 squared is equal to 12 squared times by 1.5625, okay? So therefore, if I want to know what R2 is, I'm going to do R2 is equal to square root of 12 squared times 1.5625, okay? And again, if I work that out, you will find that you will get, um, so that will be square root, it will be 15. Okay, so th this would be 15, and this is the same answer that we had before, because it's the same numbers. Okay, so remember, proportion can be done this way, or it can be done through the equations. Now, the equations I find more flexible, okay, it's easier to work with equations, but if you know this about equality of ratios, then this can also help you. Now, here are two questions for you to answer. Okay, so um, this one finishes here. What is the frequency represented in the larger pie chart? You're going to have to read this. And this one is what radius should you use for the larger pie chart? Again, you're going to have to read this to work this out.